is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Is the man, the myth, the legend that is Alan Poupart. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Doing great. Yourself? Very good. Okay, it's over now, right? Skylar Thompson, you're you're done now, right? He's Woo. on the 53 already, right? It's now over, correct? You're, there's no doubt now, right? I've been we've been trying we've been going back and forth now for the last two weeks on this. No, I I am. he's on there now officially. 90 I'm up to I'm up to 93%. How's that? Oh man, he had he had back-to-back -back throws in the, on that last drive to as we come up. Man, those were sweet. Right over the yeah. defender. I mean, nice. And the touch and the touch pass to Zigwandre cuz we've watched him we've watched him throw it deep. We've watched him throw it in tight windows. We've watched touch passes. The pass he threw in the middle of the field where it was where it was in traffic that he had a guy that was draping on his left side. So yep. he's so he's playing with traffic, which playing with traffic is something that probably is not going to be the starter's strength, by the way. That's not really what you want with Tua. You need to keep him more clean to kind of get away with those kind of things. So Braylon, I mean, uh, Skyler has shown you different types of passes. And, and, I, and I think that's also incredibly important. That touch pass he put to Zaquandre, it, it, it may seem like a, a, a really easy pass, and it's not in that moment to float it like that and lead the player in that moment. I, I Again, I got to give him credit, man. He, he's oh, he's been he's been awesome. Awesome. No, no, I mean, yeah, no question about it. I mean, that's like – and it was like, okay, what's he do? What's he do for an encore after what he did against Tampa Bay last week? And he was even better than he was last week. Um, yeah. And of course, yes, we have to mention again, it was the fourth quarter of a preseason game against a team that left like 30 players back in Vegas. That's fine. Doesn't change the fact that, like you said, what he did on that touch pass to, to Zaquandre White, which certainly wasn't the first read, was really impressive. No. And those two right. throws, 25 yards downfield over a defender. I mean, we're big time. I don't care who he's playing against. So, Amen. yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you, you can see from the guy. So now, now I'm now I'm up to ninety seven. Yeah, and, I'm, and of course, uh, I'm talking to you for two minutes. I'm up to ninety seven now. Yeah, it's 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 impossible to release him at this point because you know you're going to lose him in a quarterback starved league. Seattle and Carolina will pick him up because they have to pick him up because it's only responsible for them to take him because they have to try since they don't really have, you know, really something that you, you can really lean on overall. So especially Seattle, my God, Geno yeah. Smith, really, really? That's where you're going. Well, that that's kind of like playing Curtis painter and you're just going for the Andrew luck pick, you know, that's, that's kind of what you're doing right there. Uh, as Ukama, we already had him pegged as the fourth or fifth wide receiver, however you want to look at Trent oh. Sherfield and him. But my God, my God, that is, that is amazing. Isn't it? No, the dude can play. I mean, and, and he's, you see like the one, one of those catches on one of those long passes, there's like five guys around him trying to tackle him. And the dude, the dude will not go down. And then the concentration he had to have on that first one, Mm -hmm. down the right sideline where it went through the defender and he caught it basically he's got only one arm free and it wound up hitting him in his chest and he's able to corral it i mean no no i mean he's he's an impressive kid too and but here's the thing though is they have i mean sherfield is impressive the pressing the hell out of me i mean you're out at practice every yeah. day at practice the guy shines and no, no, he, it's, he they're, they're the fourth and fifth today. wide receivers are capable wide receivers. Like, right, like you've got your five deep, your legit five deep mm -hmm. now uh, on this team. You, you have it, when, when McDaniel wants to, uh, you know, scheme stuff, he can scheme all five guys and keep them active because he can use all of them if he wants to. And as long as some of them help him out on special teams, which I would imagine as Ukama and, uh, and Sherfield will help out you know, on special teams. Now, this is what's also developing. And this is why, you know, and, and you're, you're a draft geek like I am. Sneaky good draft, doggy. Channing Tindall, Cameron Good, Skylar Thompson, 
Okay, Azukama, like in a draft where you didn't have picks. No, correct. You hit on all of them. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, pretty amazing. Yeah, Cameron, I, I, I mean, Cameron I Good made this team. I, I've I, Cameron Good made this team. Oh, I agree. No, I agree with you. No, no, he made another big time play, like another tackle yeah. for after a one yard gain in oh. the open field. Tendall didn't do a whole lot tonight, um, but he had six tackles. He was active. Also, I saw also saw him miss like a tackle in the open field that resulted yeah. in a much bigger game than it should have been. I mean, I thought he was really good against Tampa. I didn't feel him tonight. Um, your two seventh rounders are going to make the team, and they looked like they got something. And and for a seventh round pick, that's impressive to to, to nail one. Looks like they got two of them. Um, and Izukama, I think we've already established, is a pretty damn good player. So, hey, no, third and fourth rounders that. for sure, man. I mean, yeah, Tindall, Tindall's going to make some mistakes, but he, you know, he has his positive moments too at the same time. In other words, they all look like capable players. You know what I mean? They they don't look lost at all. They look pretty damn good overall. And then we start looking at, uh, you know, Port Augustine, Ben Still. Uh, you know, these are guys that all <laughs> – is it Stilly? Is it Stilly? I'm not or, even sure, but I, I – yeah, I – and he's looked good. He's made a lot of plays. I I, I don't think there's going to be room for him on the on the 53, even though he's made plays. Gustin, Gustin, I've liked from the start of camp. I mean, every game the dude's in the backfield. Um, I don't know how he doesn't make the team. Oh, I got him making the team. I got. I mean, he's yeah. going to take Adam Butler's place. Um, you know, as your sixth defensive lineman, however you want to you want to categorize it. Um, all right, so let's let's go with the starters, uh, because as you say, because we have to talk about the quarterbacks. We do, uh, as you put as you put in your article every day. Uh, oh, yeah. Tua Tonga Vailoa, I thought did all right. I, I don't think solid. It, was, it was solid. Yeah, it was solid. I thought all right, and and I and I like the fact, which is one of the things that I think is going to develop in his. It's not develop. I think it's going to show more in his game because I think he has it. The craftiness that he's going to find ways to buy time and make a play and stretch it out, and he was able to do that a couple times today. And I think that's going to be an element that people are going to notice. And, and by the way, just to kind of give, while they sucked in run blocking, many times the offensive line did a really good job of pass pro. And they, they sometimes they gave these guys time to smoke a cigar yep. back there. Yep. I, I, I was impressed with that part. I thought that was all right, but – your your thoughts first of all on Tua? No, no question. No, I thought he he did a perfectly fine job. I thought he was very solid. I mean, the dude was six for eight, and if you look at the two incompletions, one's a naked bootleg when where somebody doesn't bite and he's in his face immediately, and he has no choice but to chuck it into the ground, and the other one's a third down to Gesicki, where Gesicki didn't turn around quickly enough, and the ball just like went right by him. Uh, I'm gonna guess. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously there's some miscommunication there. My thought from where I sit is Gesicki needed to turn his head around. Yeah, so, he had, he I, had to know that he was the hot read. Correct. So that's that's not on Tua. So and, and every other pass was a completion. I like the, the And by the way, I went back to look at it. It looked like everybody was covered at that moment when he when he released it. That he didn't have a guy that was open at that moment when he let it to Gesicki. That was his best option, actually. But and it looked like it might, like it might. It was on target if to if yes. had turned around. Right. Um, right. And the yes. third down completion to Edmonds, I like. I liked a lot because, like you said, he didn't panic. He just kept the play alive. The the, the pass protection was outstanding, and then eventually he was able to find Edmonds in the open and turn that into I don't know what what it was like a twelve yard gain. So no, I thought he did very well actually. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, what'd you think? It was kind of an up and down thing, right? He missed a couple throws. But he had a couple of throws too, so it was one of those things where I thought he did a decent job. Your thoughts on on how he did? Well, he, yeah, he was okay. His numbers are like if you look, his numbers are really bad. It's like ten for twenty for like yeah. only two yards. Passer ratings like sixty eight. I don't think it, that is reflective of the way he played. There was a one pass in the end zone. I wish I had I had the privilege of having a, a like a really good close up shot on the replay when he went to Braylon Sanders in the end zone. Oh yes. I saw, yeah, I saw the replay three times. I still can't tell whether it hit Sanders' chest first or the Raiders' DB got his hand on it. I think it hit Sanders' chest I first. Think, okay, I thought the DB got a hand on it. That's why before before it got to Sanders. Yeah. Okay. That's yes, I, I, I couldn't even I couldn't tell, and obviously that's a tough one. Um, 
he did have the one nice floater to Sanders for about what about 28 yards. That was a good throw. Um, bad, bad, bad play on the safety. He's got to get rid of the ball, even though Gesicki is the one oh, yeah. play by, by missing the block immediately. But still, when Teddy it's, was it's, aware, it's awareness, he's got to know, dude, I'm not athletic. I can't outrun people. That's never been his game. So he and he's super smart. He's got to get rid of it, bro. No, he, that's he, to, and he was outside the tackle. He was outside the tackle box. He should know better that he could have just chucked it at that point and it would have been fine instead of waiting until he's getting dragged to the ground. That, that was a bad play. Uh, but outside of that, it was, you know, not, not terrible, not, not great. Can I tell you some, as the trajectory is going, if, 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 if Skyler continues to improve, you're going to be able to trade Teddy by the by the deadline if somebody needs him, and you'll be able to pick up a pick, and you can. And their plan of Skyler being the number two, well, because right now you can almost say, yeah, Skyler might be challenging Teddy a little bit for for that backup job because you can do some things with Skyler that you won't be able to do with Teddy. Yeah, important point to be made though here is you and sure. I well know that once the regular season starts. Those right. defenses are gonna gonna get a hell of a lot more complicated for for a rookie. Yeah. So yeah. that becomes the tricky part. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Although but, this this is this dude looks a little different. He kind of he's got a little something to him because you don't do what he does without having a little something to you that you you there there's there's some extra confidence there that this kid. This kid's got something in him, man, because he, I don't know. You, you don't play like this if if you don't just have what it takes. And that's what it seems like to me. I, no, I just don't think, I don't, it's, I don't yeah, think I don't it's a guy on a hot hand right now. Put it that way. I don't disagree with you, but I, I think it's dangerous right now to just go to go crazy because defenses tend to be very vanilla in the in the preseason. For sure. For sure. And for sure. They're gonna mess, yeah. they're gonna mess with, mess with his head as they do with every rookie once the regular season starts. So as I said, I trajectory. Saying, but, as right? I said, trajectory. If the season oh, no, continues, correct. correct. And and he's killing it in the classroom, and he's killing it in practice, and they feel really good. Kind of like what they, you know. Again, this is like a completely ridiculous comparison. So I'm saying that ahead of time. But it's kind of like KC when they said, "No, this is a Mahomes kid. Yeah, we got him. He was raw, but after a year, yo, we're comfortable. We're gonna move Alex Smith away, and we're gonna move on." That kind of stuff, but at the secondary level, saying, you know what, this guy's good enough that he can be a backup right now. We can move on from Teddy and get at least a draft pick for him. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I'm saying that if he can get good enough to that point that you can feel good enough, because in the end, you're going to lose Teddy at the end of the year. Right. Well, he's only going to win your contract. So, yeah. No, no, I, I, no, I understand what you're saying. And this is where, Maybe at some point, I don't know who knows, October, maybe he takes second team reps uh, if they like what they've seen from him in the classroom and, and, you know, and things to that effect. And if, and if there's a situation that arises around the NFL where a team that could be a contender with a decent quarterback and their starter goes down, like Bridgewater could be a, a good like stopgap for that kind of team. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, Nick Needham, finger injury looks like it. So I, I don't think that's that's not something. Brother, it looked like they straightened it out right there and then, right? It looked like they pulled it right there. I don't know if you noticed it in the yeah. in the video. It looked like they were. But either way, that shouldn't be that serious. But then Crossan gets banged up, but he was able to come back. So that's – um all right. Iggy did not look good again getting killed on the on those crossing routes overall. What did you see from the secondary? Because, again, a lot of young guys get a lot of playing time since the two studs are out. No, and you forgot to mention Alexander. Also, one play went down. like He looked like he was holding yeah. his groin. Uh, I don't know if he went back in the game. I don't believe he did. Crossing went back, and it looked like a helmet-to-helmet where maybe he just got dazed. Uh, and and to me, with Igbenogany, it's not even so much the, the crosser that bothered me even though he plays those really loose, so it's easy for the guy to get in front of him because those are a bitch to cover. Uh, yeah. There was a slant. The 18-yard slant he gave up on the first drive. I mean, the cushion he's giving those guys, man, that's rough. Um, I like the Kahoo kid. I mean, the, yes. only, the only thing about him, though, and I've noticed him at practice, he's really, really handsy. 
And so Sam and Pat have to get on him that he's got to know what he can get away with and what he can't. He got flagged for a defensive holding today, even though if you look at the replay, the receiver had his hand on Kahu's face mask almost, yeah. almost at the time when the ref's throwing the flag. So that may have been a bad flag, but I've noticed the kid in practice, kid can play, even though he's he like, looks, Texas, I'm Texas with you. Happened. I like him. Yeah, um, he looks he looks interesting, and he might be one of those guys that might develop into something uh, as a backup. The the only thing I maybe he's handsy because he's not also a big guy, so he kind of is trying to be a little bit more physical because he has to make up for his lack of size. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the only thing I can guess. But there's no doubt the pass breakup was really heads up on his part and shows athleticism too. Uh, I'm with you. He's one of those guys that could be uh, – he's probably going to end up maybe earning a back-end roster spot here. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. Um, the problem he's going to have is like with Noah, for example, is Noah. Noah's tough to cut because I, I was looking at his at his salary thing and because of his, his contract situation set up in the prorated bonus, it actually costs the Dolphins cap space if they wind up cutting him. Um yeah. I, I, I don't think they're going to cut him anyways. I think they're going to keep him for another year to try to – because they invested a first-rounder in him. So I still think they're going to try to keep him for one more year and try to work him with this coaching staff and, and see what ends up happening one more year. But he has – you know, this week was his – like I was hoping that we'd see a little more today because this past week, the play with Tyreek Hill, the interception with Teddy for the touchdown – those were like good building block moments this week. And you're hoping that he can, you know, take those little steps and and get there. But tonight there was just, there was nothing. I, I Did you find something positive for him? Cause I didn't, I didn't see anything. No, no, not tonight. And you know what I can't help but think is that what's happened in the past when he's gotten burned is double moves where he gets beat deep. And now I almost see a guy who's so scared of being beat by a double move that he's playing way off guys and they're getting, and they're getting completions in front of him way too easily. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and I, 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 I'm not sure I agree with you. I think if it wasn't for the financial considerations, if it was purely on a, on, from a football standpoint, I think he'd be in big trouble for his, for his spot on the 53. Is Derm Smythe catching up to Mike Gesicki? Derm Smythe's ahead of Mike Gesicki. I don't know. I mean, that's no. In fact, I had I had my 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 uh, my writer Dante write a story basically with that suggestion. Look at the last couple of years, by the way. Smythe has started more games than Gesicki. If you go strictly by starts, even right. though Gesicki winds up playing more snaps. And I don't think there's any question in my mind that Smite's going to wind up playing more snaps this year. Um, no, I know it's completely. You've got to keep him. You've got to keep him guessing. And if he can prove he can catch, then at least the defense knows. Oh yeah, no, he's not just a blocker. We got to be careful with him. And that's what you need because you can't be. You can't go line up and say, "Oh, he can't block. He's definitely going to pass catch." Oh, he can't. He can't. He he can't catch. He's definitely going to block. So, you know, and that's what Smythe has kind of erased since he got into the league. Oh, he's a blocker. They drafted him for blocking, blocking. All of a sudden now he shows you that he can be a competent pass yeah. catcher. I like him as a pass catcher. I mean, he's not going to get 20 yards on field, but he's going to – you throw it to him, he's going to catch it. Uh, I don't recall any egregious drops from the guy, um, and he can block. And what happened with Gesicki and the fact the way they're using Gesicki is – Kind of telling to me. I mean, the dude was in the game like early in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's very telling. I mean, I had like somebody suggest they're showcasing him. No, people around the league know what he is and know what he can do. So right. you don't need to showcase him. If if teams want to talk to the Dolphins about the possibility of a trade, they know what they're getting in Gesicki. Um, and I right. think I think we can forget about the idea of him ever becoming – a good blocker because that that naked bootleg. I mean, the guy got by him in two seconds and that killed the play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although there was one play where Smythe was blocking and he he got walloped and sent back on one of those plays. They still gained yards. They they still were able to gain yards, but uh, he he took a he definitely took a hit. All right. Uh, any final thoughts on uh, on tonight's uh, matchup? 
that we I may have left out? No, uh, I, I like I like the decision to play tour. I like the decision to keep out Tyreek Hill. I like the decision oh, yeah. to keep out the, the, the personnel use was good. There's no reason to play Mostert. X, no reason whatsoever. Um, so that was very wise from that part. The running game completely sucks. Um, yeah. Again, but how much of no, that? No, 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 I talked about this before you came on, and, and, and I'll ask if you agree with me on this. There's a positive to it today. When you lose your left tackle, it it, it, it creates an imbalance for the line all of a sudden. Uh, the left guard is in a stud right now, so then that puts him at a, at a tough spot to then deal with Larnell. And then the center has to worry about the left side also. you know. So then that creates a problem for you in your running game. But on the flip side, without him in the pass pro, they were able to overcome and do a, a, a solid job tonight in pass protection. So I am hoping that the running game gets slightly better when you do get Teron Armstead. So next week will be a nice test when you when you do the dress rehearsal that hopefully, I'm not saying you'll have a running game because that's going to take a while to develop on this team, I expect. But at least maybe you can start having some semblance of success on the left side because you can go from Connor to, to Teron Armstead. Agree or disagree on that? Well, two quick points. Number one, I'm not convinced that tonight was in your dress rehearsal. Uh I would tell you I would be inclined to think more than 50-50, you're not seeing you're not seeing any frontline players next week. That's okay. right. especially after I two days. Okay. I think especially so. after two days of joint practices with the Eagles. Um that's my that's my prediction. Number two, if we talk point. about if we talk about defenses being very vanilla in in the preseason, I'm I'm thinking that the Dolphin running game has been very vanilla as well, where they're running very basic running plays, more like straight ahead, off tackle, and not necessarily doing the stretching that they that they will do a lot of in the regular season. So I think that may play a part in in the fact that they've run so poorly. All right, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, why don't you uh, bookmark alldolphins.com there for Sports Illustrated because that's what every Dolphin fan should do. That's the Bible right there every day. He writes about 87 articles a day. He is Alan Pupar. Follow him on Twitter at Pupart NFL and catch him twice a week doing his thing right here. Alan, have a terrific night, my friend. I appreciate you. Right back at you, bud. There you go. That is your Sports Grill Miami Dolphins post-game report. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.